Hi, welcome to the first episode of Stitches, Stews and Stylish Hues. My name is Jenny and I will be your host. Um, I am Frenny on Ravelry and I am Frenny Jen Jen on Instagram. Uh, you can find me on either of those places. Um, I have wanted to do a podcast for quite a while now, but as it's only me, it's taken a little while to get up the confidence to do it and to actually sit and find the time and record and everything. So hopefully you guys will like it. Um, hopefully. Um, but I'm going to just kind of crack on as if I've been doing this forever and hopefully you guys will think I have and hopefully you'll tune in again. So I've been knitting for a few years now. Um, I learnt when I was a little girl, my nan has knitted forever um, and I would go and stay with her in the summer holidays and she would show me how to knit and then I'd walk away and I live three and a half hours away from her so I wouldn't necessarily come home and practice because my mum, although she knows how to knit, doesn't actually knit very often so I would just go back to school and forget about it and not touch it again. And then a few years ago I was working um, in a big trendy office for a cosmetics company and one of the girls there who was my good friend said that she'd been knitting and showed me this beautiful cowl that she'd designed herself but it was very simplistic it was just knit stitch she was practicing but she wanted to practice on something that would be wearable once she'd done it and that she could actually walk around and be proud of it rather than a dishcloth or something and she didn't know anything about Ravelry so it wasn't as if she'd gone through loads of different designs and looked at it that way she'd just gone into a wool shop and bought what she wanted and walked out um, and it was beautifully soft and it was totally her colours and completely suited her and she had leftovers and she was beginning to make a hat. So I said to her, would she tell me how many stitches she'd cast on? And that was that. I cast on my first scarf um, in DK weight because that's what the lady in my local yarn shop told me to do. Um, and my tension was so tight that I squeaked on the needles and I couldn't actually get the needles through on the next row. So my clever friend who'd made the beautiful cow said... I didn't do it like that. Why don't you do it in bulky and it won't matter because you don't need tension and you don't need gauge and it will hide any mistakes. So she was perfectly right. And I picked up um, some big softy wool and cast on and that was that. I kept, kept knitting until I ran out of wool, bound it off and my first scarf was born. So that was maybe five, four or five years ago now. So I've kind of would like to think that I've come a long way since I um, would say that I knit every single day so you would hope that the practice means that you improve um, so now from that I've moved on and I've done cardigans and socks and cowls and I've done most things cables and lace work and stuff like that I haven't done a massive amount of colour work which is something that I'd like to get into um, but it's finding the right project and finding the time to actually sit and learn something new Sometimes it's easier just to work on a plain sock and not really have to think about anything. So anyway, that's enough about me, I think. Um, I will now tell you about my whips. So the first thing that's on my needles is a baby blanket. I recently found out that I'm going to be an auntie to my uh, boyfriend's brother and his girlfriend so that's going to be lovely I don't know whether I've got a niece or a nephew coming along so I wanted the blanket to be gender neutral in terms of colour um, and also easily thrown in the wash so it's not any kind of posh wool it's just acrylic DK weight that I've picked up and I'm knitting on the um, super easy baby blanket by, by Pearl Soho I haven't gotten very far so, um, yeah, you need to do, I think it's 20 rows of each colour. Um, and I have picked rainbow colours. So there's going to be the red, the yellow, orange, green, blue, indigo, or is it the other way around, and violet. So that's in my knitting bag that I made myself. 
that I'm very proud of and love very much. So that's kind of one of those tired in the evenings, going to sit and do something but only really want to do garter stitch kind of projects. Um, it's one of those that you can sit and not think about. So it's a nice kind of mindless knit. Um, the other thing that I'm working on is the On the Beach jumper by um, Isabel Kramer. It's the v-neck jumper that she's done. Um, oh, by the way, the baby blanket is a free download off of the Pearl Soho blog. This is also a free download. So this is also knit in DK weight. And it's done in Hayfield Bonus Aaron. And as you can see, the body is done. Um, I'm a little way on one of the sleeves, but I'm not massively happy with these needles. They're just a cheap bamboo set that my other half bought me for a birthday present, which I specified it was my my own fault that the needles haven't worked out. But they're they don't slide most of the time when I knit it. I use the Knit Pro Symphony Rosewoods, and I love them. I love what. I use them for sock knitting and constantly use the circular needles whether I'm knitting straight or in the round um, and these just don't glide and it's quite an effort to go round and round and round and obviously you do three decreases from the underarm and then you just the stripes are all 20 rows long so I'm up to the last decrease that I need before I can just go 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 but it's just not happening and I'm wondering whether actually what I need to do is treat myself to a nice pair of DPNs that I can sit and enjoy rather than pick it up knit a couple of rows put it down and then feel bad because I'm not completing the project so it is a lovely jumper and I'm really looking forward to wearing it but it's just that the sleeve knitting isn't any fun at the moment which sleeve knitting to be honest rarely is but I think if you've got the right equipment, it can spur you on to get it done sooner rather than later, really. So that's that one. And then the last thing that I'm knitting on that I can show you guys, because I've got a couple of birthday gifts that I've been working on, is the Magic Cake Ruffle Shawl by Paula of the Knitting Pipeline. I'm sure that most of you have heard about this thing. It's a fantastic way to use up leftover sock yarn, of which I have copious amounts in different amount of yardage um different colors some of them are most of them are stripy uh, some of them are variegated very very few are solid so i went through my stash and picked out colors that i thought would go together so the first is the is it jawali um, which I made into a pair of socks. That's a single ply. The second colour is this one. I need to turn it towards the light. This one just here, which is a uh, regia, which I made into a pendulum with some nitpicks um, palette for my aunt last year for her birthday or for Christmas. And then the third colour, which I have just gotten to, is this one here, and that's Rowan Fine Art, which my friend Kay gifted to me last year, um, and I made into a sock head hat, which was lovely, but I had a hell of a lot left over. And then this is the rest of my... Whoop, rest of my cake, so we've still got the Rowan to go through. Then I've got some Berger de France, which I made into socks. And then the centre, I'm not sure what it is because it was leftovers sent from my friend when she knit me a pair of socks. So I thought it would go. I'm not massively sure about this top section. It can be kind of neon-y if I put it towards the window. Um, but I'm hoping that the rest will kind of even it out a little bit and I'm also thinking that it will be up and around my neck so maybe it will be more tucked away than the rest of the colours. If not I have um, a friend on Ravelry who I've met through my Etsy shop and um, 
she was discussing with me how it couldn't possibly go wrong, my colour choices. So I think that possibly if it goes wrong, I know where she lives and she may end up getting my magic cake ruffle shawl. So that's that. And that's in the bag that my friend Kay made for me. Lovely lined bag. She will also be opening an Etsy shop soon, I hope. So those are my whips. That's a paid for pattern, in case you were wondering. Um, loads and loads of people have knit it. It is a really great way to use up your yarn. I think maybe the thing that I've learned from my era is that it's best to probably use similar supplies or similar sort of fabrics, fibres in it, so that you get that kind of more fluid look rather than my singles and then my plied and I don't know I think it's really the neon colour that's putting me off but we'll see how it works out so recently off of my needles um I knit a pair of afterthought heel socks by Laura Linneman of the Knit Girls in opal so that's those they are lovely and matchy matchy um, that's one reason that I like to do the afterthought heels because then you can really get it in the right place. There you go, that's probably the best way. Um, so they're in Opal Hundert Wasser in 7003. They were a gift from my friend Kay. We had a deal at the beginning of the year that we were both going to go cold turkey and not buy any yarn because we both have plenty and thought that we were getting a little bit yarn piggy and that we would try to knit from stash and then as we knit through it then replace if we felt that we needed to and then Opal tempted her with this new release and the deal that we'd made with each other was the first one to crack had to buy the other one the same ball of yarn so she very kindly paid out on the bet which I was never going to make her do um, but it's worked out lovely because they're sparkly and gorgeous and I love them. So thank you very much, Kay. The other thing that I've been working on is baby knits for my niece or nephew to be. My uh, sister-in-law, who is the pregnant sister-in-law, can knit, but at the moment she can't knit in the round. So she requested that I knit her a sleep sack, what I'm calling a sleep sack. It's actually the baby cosy by Nikki Vandekar, which, although it appears in a book, is actually a free download if you go on to Ravelry and follow the link to her blog. So I knit this in Wendy Chunky. And it's a bulky weight. All I need to do is get some buttons for just along here. And it's like basically a little sleeping bag for the baby to go into. So it's lovely and soft. The yarn was a gift from a friend of mine for Christmas. Um, and it was nice to be able to use it up on the new baby. So that's that one. That's a free download, as I said, so the afterthought hill socks. And then the other thing that I'm making the baby, because Carol can't knit in the round yet, are little socks. So these are the uh, Socceroos Baby Socks by Angela Wisnant. Um, it's a free download. I think it's a link to her blog. It was a really easy pattern to follow. I think it was 36 stitches in the round and then a heel flap and then just go down. It's a pattern for newborns, but because you never really know the size of the baby, I've knit it for a bit longer and I'm ashamed to say I think I've actually knit one slightly shorter than the other, but the kid's not going to be walking in it, are they? So... I'm not going to go back and change that. So yes, that's those. They're knit out of King Cole's zigzag. So that's what I'm working on and what I've finished. Um, as I said, at the beginning of the year, I wanted to go on a yarn diet. It hasn't been massively successful, but then it hasn't been a massive flop either. Um, I've got plenty of sweater quantities of yarn to get through, so... That was my big thing was that I didn't want to buy any more big balls of Aran or anything like that. I wanted to work through what I had in that respect. But I'm a bit of a sucker for sock yarn because I am constantly knitting on a pair of socks apart from in this moment. Um, 
because I'm trying to get a couple of birthday gifts out of the way. So I'm trying to stick away from my, oh, this is nice and easy. I've had a tiring day at work. I'm just going to knit in the round nice and peacefully. Um, And I'm trying to move away into paying a little bit more attention so that my friends and relatives get nice gifts. So my falling down, um, the first yarn I'm going to show you is what I asked my other half to get me for, for Valentine's Day. So it's an old acquisition, but actually I haven't acquired much in between. And that, other than buying yarn for the baby and the blanket, I haven't actually bought any others. I didn't buy before, and I've only bought three since. So I'm not doing too badly. Um, the yarn that he bought me was from Sharon at Five Moons Yarn. This is the Artemis 4-ply, which is her 75% Superwash Merino 20% nylon and 5% Stellina Sparkle and it is beautiful. This is in the View the Heavens colourway um, and it smells amazing when you get it. I know what her secret is if you want it. Um, and now all of my clothes smell the same. Um, she's absolutely lovely. She was really kind to my other half, clocked straight away that it was for his girlfriend and um, was good fun and lovely to him so that he was really impressed with the service um, and he also bought me oh, this is her Diana four ply and it's 50% superwash merino and 50% silk and it feels absolutely amazing it's the fading clamour oak um, colourway and it's 437 yards so I think this is going to be um, a Hohi Locatelli to Infinity and Beyond cowl. Um, this one is also 437 yards. So really, really great yardage. Um, and they're really reasonably priced. She's not on Etsy. She's actually got her own shop. Um, and it's always really, really well stocked. And she does some incredible colourways. And I would definitely, definitely recommend her. Um, and I will let you guys know uh, when... I knit them up and how they knit up. The other thing that I purchased for myself, um, I got tempted by my enabler pen pal Kay, who told me that Serdar had brought out new stripy yarn called Heart and Soul, and I bought two balls. So there you go. Um, as with the more commercial yarns, there are only numbers. So this is 106 and this is 104. This, I think, is going to be a pair of socks for my uncle for Christmas. This one, I think, is probably going to be a pair for me. And they will probably be plain afterthought heel socks, the same Laura Linneman pattern that I used before. Um, it does say that there's a free sock pattern, so it must be on the inside of the ball. These are 75% wool and 25% nylon. They're 448 yards, and I think they were about 8 quid. So it's not bad for a pair of socks, really. Um, they're not as soft as the King Cole Zigzag. They're a little bit scrunchy, um, but they're nice nonetheless. I'm going to be happy to use those. And the final thing I bought is King Cole Zigzag. They've recently... Um, launch new colourways. I've been using them for ages. We've got a shocking lack of local yarn stores in my area. I live just outside of London in Essex in the UK. You could probably guess UK um, from my accent. Um, the yarn store that we have closest to me, which is also a fabric store, is really poorly stocked. They never change any of their their ranges, um, it's really unusual to find sock yarn in there. Um, it's more kind of catered at what you would expect older women, as in 60, 70, 80 year old women to be buying for gifts for grandchildren made to be made up for Christmas or whatever. They're super unfriendly. No one says hello when you walk in. They don't really talk to you when you're paying um, and God forbid you should actually have a conversation with them about knitting. So I don't like to support them. There's also nothing that I'm interested in buying in their store, so I don't go in there. But we do have a local indoor market um, with an amazing um, authentic Thai food restaurant, which is where I like to go and eat once I've been yarn shopping. Um, they also don't change their range very much, but because it's a market store, it's that much cheaper. Um, 
and they do bring in the new colours. So when King Cole Zigzag brought out this new range, I knew I'd be able to get it there. Some of their stuff is just variegated and some self-striped and it never says on the packaging. So either it's a great idea to go on to Ravelry and look at projects made up by other people before you buy or just take the gamble. If you don't really care what you get, then it's not a problem, is it? So this is their new colourway. It's gorgeous. It's pinks and purples and a mint green and a lovely aqua blue. It's their lot. It's called Emperor and it's 1238 and it's 460 yards and I paid a fiver. So I think that's fantastic because generally speaking I can get a pair of socks for myself out of this and then either if we have a niece instead of a nephew they can have a pair of socks or maybe I'll have another crazy magic ruffle cake shawl. But there is always about a hundred and... 30 140 yards left over at the end of it and I tend to do a five inch or a six inch cuff on my socks and I'm a UK size six so it's not a massively long so foot to knit for but if you are knitting for men they do do more kind of masculine colorways and you might find that you get better yardage for it so that's that um I really haven't bought any other yarn this year which is really good I'm really proud of myself um it's not that it's not tempting but you can kind of shop your own yarn store, can't you, when you've got this kind of stash. So I don't want to go beyond life expectancy. Um, the other thing I thought I would talk about on the podcast is reading. Um, I read almost every day, um, unless I'm too tired to. And I really enjoy when La La of the Knit Girls talks about what she's reading, when Leslie talks about what she's reading... I also really enjoy the Two Knit Lit Chicks podcast and hearing what their recommendations are. Um, I won't recommend any books this time because I think I'd like to keep the first episode quite short. Um, a, I want it to upload a little bit quicker so that if you guys do hear about it, I can maybe get some feedback sooner rather than later. And I would also not really know where to start. I've been reading for years and years and years. I'm a bit of a bookworm. And it's one of those questions, sort of, what, who's your favourite pet? <laughs> you can't really narrow down what your favourite books are. So I thought that I would start off with telling you what I'm reading at the moment and then maybe going on to tell you what I'm thinking of reading next. So I am reading, let me move a couple of things. This, Remarkable Creatures by Tracy Chevalier. I don't know whether you've read any of her books. She's also written The Girl with the Pearl Earring, which was made into a film with Scarlett Johansson and Colin Firth. Um, and she's also written The Unicorn, The Lady and the Unicorn, um, and a couple of others that I haven't read yet. Oh, and there was another one about suffragettes, but I can't remember what that was called. Um, they're always about or linked to historical figures. So the girl with the pearl earring is linked to Vermeers, the Dutch painter, and is about her. She was a maid um, for him for a certain amount of time, and it's her narrating a story. Um, this one is based in England in Lyme Regis, um, which is on the south coast, it's on the Jurassic coast. And in Lyme Regis, there are certain rocks that you can find and when you smash them in half, you'll find a fossil. Um, and this is about fossil hunting and it's linked to a historical figure, <coughs> excuse me, um, called Mary Anning. And I don't know a lot about her yet. I'm only about halfway through. Um but I know that she's on Wikipedia, because I checked. <laughs> but I didn't want to read anything about her Wikipedia page in case it spoiled the story for me. So at the moment, they're discovering what they think and are calling crocodiles. But possibly, I think it might be a dinosaur. So it's a good book. It's not massively action-packed. Um, it's kind of ambling along. The characters are quite nice. It switches um, between narrators, between the chapters so one of the narrators is Mary Anning and the other narrator is a friend of hers who is a older spinster who also enjoys fossil finding um she's a little bit more worldly because she was based in London and has moved down to Lyme Regis um so yeah it's, it's a good read I am enjoying it it's just 
not one of those unputdownable books, unfortunately. The last book I read was The um, City of Bones by Cassandra Clare, and it was just such an absolute guilty pleasure. It took me straight back to my days of watching Buffy the Vampire Slayer. It had demons and vampires, and it was told from the viewpoint of a teenage girl who has to go into this underworld and I could not stop reading it. It was so ridiculous. I'm almost 29 years old and what I really want to read about is teenagers fighting demons, apparently. Who knew? So, um, yeah, I've only read book one of that series. I know that the sixth book is coming out this month. Um, so I've got two, three, four, five to read first. Um and then maybe I'll ask for it for my birthday, so that's coming up soon, so that should be good. Okay, so I've been Stitches, Stews and Stylish Hues. Like I said, you can find me on Ravelry. My name is Frenny, F-R-E-N-N-Y, or I'm on Instagram as Frenny Jen Jen. Um, and hopefully I'll be seeing you soon. <laughs>